Well, good evening again, everybody. Welcome to all of you. Uh, this is part two of the series on the mass in slow motion. And tonight, uh, just to recap, we're going to pick up where we left off last week. Last week, we went through um, all of the elements from the vesting and through that, those portions of the, the initial rites, the penitential rite, and the, the liturgy of the word, all the way up to the, the intercessions. And now we're going to uh, pick up the next part and continue, which is the liturgy, liturgy of the Eucharist. I want to draw your attention again to a, a couple of principles, the principles that we'll see again tonight that really underwrite much of, of how we'll understand the events of the, of the liturgy of the Eucharist. That our traditions and the, the format of the, of the Mass really comes from the Jewish worship, the synagogue worship, but then added to that would be this new event, the, the Last Supper, which was again taken from the Passover, but given new meaning by Jesus Christ. So the synagogue worship and Passover together, you might say, are the full foundation for the, what we call the Mass, the Divine Liturgy, the Eucharist. Many of these customs, uh, and you will, we'll talk about some of those, they began in, uh, for very practical reasons, but then over time, those, re those events took on deeper spiritual and theological meaning. And so we'll see, um, we'll see how that takes place as well. I'm going to speak behind the altar because what I'll be doing tonight will really uh, be mostly taking place here. So we begin the liturgy of the Eucharist. And on the altar, we have first an altar cloth. And that's always you know, required that there be a cloth that covers the altar. And then we have this crucifix. I, found, I happened to find one online that is exactly the same as the one we have here. Um, and it's an altar crucifix. And it's for, really, the priest, that he might focus on the crucifix. You have yours back there. That's for your attention. That's to draw your attention. I need one for myself so that I remember that this is the sacrifice of the Mass, the event that we're celebrating is the victory of Jesus Christ over death at Calvary. And so the, cru the cross, the crucifix, is for us the emblem, the, sim the, the premier symbol that help us to, helps us to understand that. So there should always be an altar crucifix for the priest to focus on. Next, on the altar, I'm preparing the altar, we will have the sacramentary. And in this big book, with lots of ribbons. We have all of the prayers and all of the, the parts of the Mass, and some of it is put to music, some of it is in, is just, are just words, but all of the parts of the Mass that we will need, the prefaces, the Eucharistic prayers, I'll explain those a little bit more in detail, in the more detail, but all of those are contained in this book. It's called the Sacramentary. Another word for it would be the Missal. The Missal, M-I-S-S-A-L. Not <coughs> Missal, but M-I-S-S-A-L. Okay. Now, the next thing that we do when we prepare the altar for the, the liturgy of the Eucharist is we bring up the, the chalice and paten. Chalices are of all kinds of shapes and varieties, but always the interior is lined with precious metal, usually gold, because wine will be transformed into the blood of Jesus Christ, truly his blood. And so we use a, a, a vessel that is worthy of that, and so the requirement is that the interior would always be gold, and oftentimes the exterior is either silver or gold as well, though using precious metals. Um, for a while, it was customary, some churches some, and some priests used glass vessels, but uh, the church has declared in, in, in the recent uh, instruction, general instruction of the Roman Missal that glass is not permissible. For one thing, it could break, it could fall and break, and the precious blood would scatter. 
um, but also the, the nature of the vessel is not really sufficiently dignified for what for the event that's taking place and the pattern is simply a round as you can see the see it on the on the screen up there it's a round little dish on which is placed the host right now this is just bread but as a result of the praying of the liturgy of the Eucharist it will become the body of the Lord so it's placed on a patent we don't necessarily have to use a patent I, I when we have mass on Sunday we have a big bowl that has all of the little hosts that will be used for the assembly so I place the big host on that some prefer to have the patent, but it's not absolutely required. So we have the chalice, the patent with the host. Then we have some altar linens. We have this napkin here. I, when I'm talking to the altar service, I say, get me another napkin, rather than the correct word, which is purificator. It's called a purificator. And uh, it's made out of linen. It's oftentimes it has a little cross on it embroidered on it. I think this one has one on it somewhere. Um, maybe we have the bargain variety here. But some, most of the times they'll have a little cross. You can see it right in the middle of the one on the left. That's the purificator. And this, like the, 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 the linen next to it, which is the corporal, are used in order to both receive any particles of the Blessed Sacrament that might fall when the Blessed Sacrament is broken or transferred from one vessel to another. And the purificator is used to purify the vessels. And in both cases, these linens have to be washed very, very specially because they now have particles of the real presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. They have to first of all be soaked in a bucket and washed in a bucket of water, soap, and then that water has to be poured into the ground. And then, and only then, are we free, are the, pe the people who wash them, are they free to put these into the washing machine and then wash them with like regular linen. But we don't do that first because we don't want those particles to be placed, to be go, to go into the washing machine and then into the sewer. Uh, we have a special sink in the sacristy that goes directly into the ground and only into the ground. We call that a sacrarium for the same reason. If we have to purify vessels and we purify them, any water that's left over is, goes into the sacrarium rather than into the sewer. We never pour any precious blood down there. But again, it's, it's, it's understanding that this is really the body and the blood of the Lord and great care Great, great care has to be taken in order to ensure the proper treatment and reverence. Okay, now, the corporal is opened and placed on the altar. And the word corporal, as you can imagine, corpus, it, it comes from the Latin body. And so this is where the body of the Lord is consecrated, on the corporal. And so the priest will place all of the the vessels that contain the host, the cups with the wine, and the chalice. You know, if it's a daily mass and, they're, I'm not, and we're not offering the precious blood, it'll just be the chalice and the patent, the chalice having the wine and the water. But it'll all be done on the corporal. All the events that take place on the altar take place on the corporal.